Football, there's nothing like it. Hail Mary passes, bone rattling hits, and likely some boneheaded calls by the refs. We cheer for the hits, but we're learning more about the impacts those brutal tackles have on the brain. Players always wear their helmets, but are these helmets enough? In the early 1900s, football players were dying from head injuries including skull fractures and bleeding from inside the brain. That led to the first helmets made from leather and sometimes cloth padding, which made football a whole lot safer. But by the 1960s, the death from head injuries started to rise again, leading to mandatory use of hard shell football helmets and standards to certify that helmets actually prevented injuries. Football helmets have stayed pretty much the same since then, but they have a hard outer shell, a thick lining of foam padding, and a grill of bars to protect the face. So the idea behind helmets is to decrease the force the skull and brain feel on impact. How much of an impact? Well, let's ask this scientist. Well, say you're on a roller coaster. You might feel yourself being pushed down into your seat about five times the force of gravity, or five Gs. A fighter pilot feels twice that in a tight turn. What about two football players crashing together at full speed? It could be 30 times that, 150 Gs. And that's just the big hits. Even routine collisions are about 30 or 40 Gs. All those hits are bad news for your brain. Our skull's a good, solid, protective shell, but the brain is vulnerable because it isn't locked into place. It sort of floats around in your skull. When you get hit in the head, your brain sloshes around, hitting the inside of your skull, which can cause a concussion. The immediate results can include dizziness, confusion, and feeling sick. Longer-term consequences of a concussion are only beginning to be understood, but many former football players report scary effects like personality changes and impaired brain function. So, how does a helmet help? A good helmet can limit the force the brain feels. The hard shell stops anything from actually hitting the skull, which prevents fractures. Early plastics used for the shell were brittle and could crack. But newer polymers, like polycarbonate blends found in bulletproof glass, can absorb a lot of the force and don't crack under pressure. But the real value of a modern football helmet is in the smoothing out of the impact. With the helmet on, the duration of the collision is spread out, meaning less damaging force at a given instant. You can thank the foam inside the helmet for this dispersion of force. These foams are made out of chemicals like vinyl nitrile or ethylene vinyl acetate. You might recognize these chemicals from those awesome foam fingers. So if padding helps cushion the blow, why not just add more padding? Well, too much soft padding can mean the impact moves through the cushy padding until it finds a weak point. That weak point? Your neck. There was also the scientifically dubious idea of putting a liner of Kevlar inside a helmet. That makes the helmet shell stronger, but does nothing to cushion the brain. One researcher likened it to an egg. A stronger shell won't stop the yolk inside from getting scrambled. The real answer, unfortunately, seems to be that football is a dangerous sport. Bones break, tendons tear, knees go kaput. Head injuries may be inevitable. Some players accept the risk, while others leave the field. Without changing the way the game is played, the best thing we can do right now is rely on new materials and a growing understanding of brain injuries to protect our players as best we can. Hopefully your top fantasy player won't get hurt this season. Let us know who you're rooting for down below in the comment section, college or pro, we want to know. If you haven't guessed it from my quote unquote Philly accent, which I don't think exists, I'm an Eagles fan, so bring it Cowboys, we're ready for you. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and hey, thanks for watching.